Imagine a hardcore shooter akin to like Tarkov or something, but single player so you don't have to worry about people camping exfils or anything to ruin your runs, with a depth of tons of weapons, looting, trading, and survival elements with variable and dynamic weather and world events, various maps, and much more. Sounds crazy, right? What if I told you that was a real game that's coming? Would you believe me? And would you believe me if I said this game was made by one singular developer? Well, welcome to Road to Vostok, a game that is exactly what we just described. This game made a few waves a few months ago when it was in a playable demo state showcasing some of the core mechanics, weaponry, loot, inventory, and such, but then it went quiet and no one really knew why. That was until recently when it was announced the game would be entirely switching engines, and with that came almost a whole month of work to complete it, clocking in at 615 hours of port time. Previously built on the Unity engine, amidst the fallout with developers and the controversy of the platform's treatment for developers, Road to Vostok was single-handedly ported over to the open-source Godot engine. So we haven't heard much about this for pretty good reason. It's been a long-winded shift, fundamentally speaking, something that took so much time to get back to where it was on an entirely new engine. But what is Road to Vostok? Well, it's a post-apocalyptic, hardcore, single-player survival game set in a border zone of Finland and Russia where your goal is to survive, loot, plan, and prepare to find your way across the border zone and enter Vostok. Now, the core of the game has many gameplay features, world features, and more. Survival obviously being one of the biggest ones, it's a hardcore survival sandbox experience with with realistic weapon mechanics, survival systems, and hostile NPCs, including 20 medical conditions, tactical weapon handlings, permadeath elements, and in-depth character simulations. Scavenging, storing, and crafting hundreds of unique items based on real-world counterparts is imperative for the game's loop, and you'll want to make sure you find weapons, tools, consumables, med items, military gear, electronics, apparel, and more, with elements of buying, selling, and trading also taking place with in-game traders that will either accept or refuse items like weaponry, but also can give you things like maintenance on your weapons or medical items if you need any. There will be dynamic gameplay events like crash sites of helicopters, ambushes, airdrops, and special quests that can be activated, and that goes on top of dynamic weather systems, which we'll run down in a second. The maps will be individual and based on real-world locations, but are all connected to each other, and each of these maps will have different difficulty ratings, with the main idea being that the further east you travel towards that Vostok zone, the game will get harder, but the loot will get better. Shelters will be your safe zones and places to store loot, home base in a sense. These will differ in size and customization, but are always available to the player and most of the time are pretty easy to find. It's also the only way to save your game, per se. The border zone can be crossed using points which lead to Vostok, but each of these crossing points will have a unique gameplay mechanic and certain level of risk associated with them. And finally, Vostok, the dangerous and mysterious exclusion zone that is the sort of end game. The moment you cross that border, you're inside the permadeath zone. So if you die in Vostok, you will lose everything, regardless of shelter. In fact, you'll also lose all your shelter items and entire save files. So yeah, the stakes are pretty high. Now, the current build of the game is one that to me, I don't think that you'd ever really think is a one-man show, nor a game that is essentially the first of its kind on this engine. Most of Godot has never really been pushed for the semi-realistic first-person shooter perspective when you look at games built upon it, so Road to Vostok is blazing the trail here. The current public demo, number one, available on Steam right now if you want to try it out for yourself, is available on PC only. It's a demo that does actually have a surprising lot of fun little features and details that just honestly, to me, for frankly, one developer again is just downright impressive. With world settings for the times of day, such as dawn, day, dusk, and night, weather of neutral, dark, rain, or thunder, or if you switch over to the winter seasons rather than summer, you have the ability to choose from the dark, snow, or blizzard weathers, bringing in that variable weather into play. But then you have things like the ability to simulate the northern lights, which makes for some really cool ambiance with the nighttime variations of the map. With variable audio settings, music tracks, mouse settings, camera and field of view settings, along with color settings and general render settings for the graphical output, as well as an AI spawner that will spawn two AI you can fight around the map at any time for as long as you'd like, a whole inventory system for looting and stashing items that you pick up while just scavenging or off of dead enemies in the future future, weapon customization, and a solid half dozen working weapons with animation and attachment integration along with the whole customization side of things, 
It's a genuinely impressive demo shifting an entire game from one engine to the next, a task that would be no small feat for a whole development team, let alone a singular game developer working on this. Now that said, demo one is a bit limiting in what can be done in that gameplay loop. The initial demo is just simply to showcase the core mechanics, the systems in place for inventory, AI, weather, world settings, and more, showcasing the basis of what can be done with Godot. But if you're looking to jump in and expect a full-fledged gameplay experience with perfected combat, perfect audio, and things like that, you would be disappointed. But if you can appreciate it for what it is, it is downright impressive as a first playable version of a game that is still a long ways off. And on the content side of things, yes, you're limited to this small town with no way to access shelters, nor have the secondary map of Shipyard said to be coming in demo too. But over on the Road to Vostok Twitter account, we actually do have previews of these kind of things, and it looks incredibly good and is an expansion I'm really looking forward to seeing. He's also previewed some of the more minor and, as he puts it, atmospheric pieces, like the ability to pick up and play a few instruments with custom songs. Beyond that, he showcased, for example, some of the from scratch emulation of what he had to build with a buoyancy system for water play, something that Godot didn't really have a whole ton of support for, but he made it along with other things. But that's honestly probably one of the biggest things that Road to Vostok is known for and is absolutely killing it with. The game looks good. It's insanely impressive and all being from one developer, but it's the transparency and the process cataloging that's really given this game a name for itself and a loving and loyal fan base from those that have already known about it and have been following. Transparency like this does not happen in AAA environments. And we've talked about it before as to why that is. Simple communications have to pass through multiple channels of studio dev to studio comms to publish your PR to legal before you can ever get a simple message of like, hey, we're doing this type of message out there. But it's just refreshing to see. And in a lot, and I mean a lot of cases, it's simply educational. He's bringing people along for the ride in how he does this, cataloging the entire process from basically even the most minute details down to things that are of larger importance, cataloging and sharing everything in the developmental process, which honestly, I think is just fascinating and really cool. So not only does the game look pretty awesome and I think has a decent bit of potential, but it's just fascinating to follow. So that said, public demos out right now, but what about the future? What about public demo two whenever this happens? What about a Steam early access and full release? Well, right now, there's not really a whole sort of updated time frame here for this. Previously, before the shift away from Unity, it was something that he wanted to get the public demo one that is out right now done in Q3 of 2022 and public demo two a year later in Q3 of 2023 but that's not really the case at this point. Public Demo 1 just went out a little bit ago with Public Demo 2 still likely a decent ways away. So we do still have this long road on the road to Vostok, but it is something that I'm incredibly fascinated by. Long, long term here, like after the game is actually out there in full release, it'll be something that he stated is $10 for early access, 20 for full release whenever that ends up happening, but absolutely no additional costs on top of that. That is just simply the one-time base price you'll pay, and you'll be able to play the game to your heart's content. He has mentioned that there is potential for some sort of multiplayer or co-op later on down the line, but as detailed in all of his messaging, he really is a perfectionist. He wants to get this down to the standard that he thinks is something that is worth playing and that he would be proud of playing. So it's not something that's on that near horizon. Same with a console port here for this. It is something that right now is PC built, is optimized for PC, and is designed to be played with mouse and keyboard to achieve the best possible gameplay experience. But he said he's open to considering other platforms as well after the initial release. Again, when that may be. But The Road to Vostok is a game that looks to be challenging a lot of what we see here in regards to the conventional ways and methods of developing a game, not only, but also the product at the end of the tunnel as well. And again, for one singular developer, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty crazy. So that is Road to Vostok. And a game that I just wanted to highlight and let you know about that if you want to check this out for yourself over on Steam, it's not a very intensive demo, so you should be able to play it hopefully on most systems. And again, the demo itself is free to play. You don't have to pay for anything here for this. But that said, let me know your thoughts down below. What would you guys think here of the Road to Vostok? Do you like the sound of it? Do you like the look of the gameplay itself? Do you like just the idea of a sort of single player Tarkov? Let me know your thoughts down below. But if you guys enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And and make sure you subscribe for more game showcases like this, as well as our standard content for Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, X Defiant, The Finals, and other games like that. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. So thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.